Hello. How is everyone today? It's been a minute. I'm glad to see that you're all doing well. Have you ever wanted to get into crypto, but weren't quite sure what you'd do after you bought some for the first time? Kind of like, okay, I finally took the plunge, but now what? What type of wallet should I use? Am I storing it correctly? Will someone hack me? Can other people hold on to my crypto for me so that I don't have to take all of this responsibility? All of these are valid questions I'd expect anyone who is new to crypto to have. There's just so much to learn. Today, I will answer these questions for you, hopefully clearing up any of the uneasiness you have with your wallet choice. And without further ado, we're going to jump right in. Custodial versus non-custodial wallets. That's the question. And boy, oh boy, is that ever the question. All right, let's get into it. When you hold cryptocurrency, you've got options. That's really the point with crypto and part of its value proposition. Crypto gives you the opportunity to actually 100% own an asset. You are the only person in charge of it, and you also control it. Unlike, say, when you decide to use the bank, where once you give them your money, they can do whatever they want with it. With cryptocurrency, your funds are stored in something called a wallet. Now, this wallet isn't what you typically think of when you hear the word wallet. It's not some raggedy leather mask that you fold up and put into your pocket. But instead, this wallet is actually where your public and private keys are stored. What's a public and private key, you ask? Well, your public key is an address associated with your wallet that is able to be publicly viewable, thus the term public key. This is the string of letters and numbers where you get funds sent to the wallet. As you may surmise, the private key is something a little bit more personal. Whoever controls the private key for the wallet also control the funds, as the private keys are what allows for money to be sent out of the wallet. The private keys for a wallet are stored as something called a seed phrase. It's a cryptographically generated list of words, usually 12 or 24 of them, that correspond with the private keys for that specific wallet. The seed phrase can be used to regenerate the wallet if the device is ever lost or stolen. It's important to remember to keep your seed phrase safe from prying eyes, as whoever controls this controls the coins in the wallet. This is where the idea of what type of wallet you choose comes into importance. Custodial wallets opt for someone else having custody of the private keys for your wallet, whereas non-custodial wallets allow you to retain the control of the private keys. Why would you want to hold on to your own money in a non-custodial wallet? Well, this is kind of the whole point of cryptocurrency. It's taking power away from the banks and giving it back to the people. You are the only person that has the ability to move funds in a non-custodial wallet. There are no onerous, know your customer, anti-money laundering regulations that you need to succumb to when you're ready to send funds. Instead, simply download your wallet, secure your seed phrase, and off you go. There are different types of non-custodial wallets each with its own purpose. Hot wallets and cold storage wallets are the two main types. A hot wallet is a non-custodial wallet that is connected to the internet. These types of wallets are usually apps on cell phones or other devices. You still retain control of the keys, but as it is connected to the internet, it's constantly under the threat of attack. It would be wise to only keep a small amount of crypto in it. Think everyday spending types of amounts, using it kind of like a wallet or a purse that you'd be comfortable carrying around with you out in public. Now onto cold storage, the other type of non-custodial wallet. These setups use something called a hardware device. The brands Trezor or Ledger are two of the most popular. They're called cold storage because they stay disconnected from the internet. This is the type of wallet that you want to use when you're getting serious about keeping your crypto safe. And it's really only recommended if you're holding a fairly large amount of crypto funds as they are moderately priced, but you are paying for the peace of mind that your crypto is safe. It is theoretically safer being disconnected from the internet than say a hot wallet would be. The trade-off though is that it is going to be a little more inconvenient to use with storage. That inconvenience though is offset by the added safety of having your crypto offline. With a hardware device set up, the device is the private key to your crypto. Someone will need to access the device itself to send funds out of the wallet that you've got. And even if they did have physical access to the device, they would still need to log on as most of the hardware wallets have the ability to set up pins and passcodes to heighten the security. They would really have to know what they're doing to get to your cryptocurrency. As non-custodial wallets allow you to have complete control over your crypto, 
it comes with the disadvantage of personal responsibility. Only you are responsible for your precious crypto. You must determine how to properly back up your seed phrase and keep it safe from any unforeseen disaster. If you do it wrong, you could end up losing all of your crypto funds. There will be no one else to blame except yourself, which is kind of scary when you think of it. Just how horrible would it be to mess up? You alone have all the power to succeed or fail. Obviously, some people either aren't ready for this type of responsibility or would rather just not have to deal with planning to keep a seed phrase safe from a fire, burglary, or any other threat. I don't blame them either. Luckily for them, there is something called custodial wallets. With custodial wallets, the responsibility for security is now hoisted onto the wallet provider. They have the private key to your wallet, and with the ownership of the private key, they control the funds associated with that wallet. You are letting someone else control the custody of your funds, thus the name custodial wallet. You must trust and hope they do a good job with security and are willing to give you back your funds when you ask for them. This is a similar arrangement that banks have with their customers and it's what many people are already used to. Most people don't have any problem trusting someone else with their money. Online banks, the custodial wallets do not lend out your money though. So you can rest safely knowing that your crypto won't be gambled with. With all of those funds in one place, the custodial wallet operator has created a huge honeypot for hackers to go after. Think of all of that money they could get. If they could just break through the defenses set up by the wallet provider. With such high rewards for the successful hacking of a custodial wallet, there have been numerous occurrences. And unlike a bank which uses FDIC insurance, many of these custodial wallets have no way to pay back users if their funds are stolen. Also, when choosing to use a custodial wallet, you need to think that the people in charge of the wallet might be threats too. They are humans, and given proper incentive to take your money, they just might try and get away with it either outright stealing it or maybe trying to claim it as being lost or stolen. Once your crypto is gone, it's gone forever. You can't just cancel the payment like a typical credit card and any legal recourse you may think you have has usually been signed away when you agree to the terms and conditions of using the custodial wallet. So it's kind of up in the air as to what will happen if something were to go wrong and funds were to be lost. If the custodial wallet wants to retain any of their already tarnished reputation, you can expect for them to try and help you in one way or another, but that's a risk that you need to think about. So which is better? Well, it really comes down to many things. How much crypto do you have? How responsible are you? Do you feel comfortable trusting other people? Do you know what you're doing, sending and receiving crypto? These are just a few of the things to consider when you're deciding whether or not to choose a non-custodial or a custodial wallet. Or you could always opt for a combination of both. If you don't think you're ready for the challenge of keeping your seed phrase secret, just opt for custodial. There's no shame in realizing that certain things just aren't for you. Maybe instead, while keeping your funds in a custodial wallet, work on learning more about storing your own crypto so that maybe one day you can work up to keeping some of it under your control in a non-custodial wallet. If you do choose a non-custodial wallet set up for your funds, you can do more research and learn about the benefits of a multi-signature wallet. These are wallets where there are numerous private keys that must be signed in order to move the funds. Say for example, you have a two of three multi-signature wallet. You would need two of the three keys to spend the funds from the wallet. These keys could be stored on a hardware wallet device to increase the security even more. There are really a ton of options for storing your cryptocurrency safely and securely. There's no one right answer. As I said before, you need to do what you feel comfortable with. And once you've educated yourself on the other options, then maybe you switch your setup around a bit to fit the level of risk that you're willing to undertake. All right, everyone, I hope that I was able to point you in the right direction on custodial and non-custodial wallets, the good, the bad, and why you would want to choose either or both to store your hard-earned cryptocurrency. I'll talk with you all again soon. Adios.